welcome back. We are going to take a look at something called the limiting reactant. In order to complete a full stoichiometry problem, we need to know how to determine what is the limiting reactant. What is a limiting reactant? Let's say that we want to build a campfire. And I have my wood. I light my wood. There's a nice fire burning. Eventually, however, my fire is going to end. My fire will end up just as some ashes left behind. And the question is, why does that happen? What happens to make my fire go out? Well, let's take a look at the reaction. So we have wood plus oxygen and we're creating carbon dioxide and water. This is just a normal combustion reaction. So if we look at our fire, we know it's made out of wood, and we know our wood is burning in the presence of oxygen. So in order for my fire to go out, one of these reactants has to be used up. And if we look at our fire, Eventually, we can see that our wood is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and our wood runs out. That's why we have to keep adding wood to the fire to keep it going. Eventually, our wood is going to burn up. It's going to be gone. We still have oxygen in the air. We haven't run out of oxygen, but we have run out of wood. So in this case, wood would be called the limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is the reactant that is completely used up. It's completely used up in a reaction. And it controls the amount of product that can be formed. So the limiting reactant is completely used up in a reaction and it controls the amount of product that can be formed. Once we run out of our wood, once our wood is completely burned up, the fire stops burning and we stop making carbon dioxide and water. We still have plenty of oxygen in the air, but the reaction cannot continue because we ran out of one of our reactants. So the limiting reactant is completely used up in a reaction and it controls the amount of product that can be formed. You've all heard the saying, you're only as strong as your weakest link. That's the same in chemistry. We can only form as much product as we have reacted for. So if we run out of one of our reactants, that's it. The reaction is over. It has stopped and we've made the maximum amount of product possible. So oxygen in this case would be known as the excess reactant, excess reactant. It's the reactant that is not completely used up, not completely used up. There's some left over, left in excess at the end of our reaction. So again, in this example, wood is the limiting reactant. It is burned up. It's no longer available. And oxygen is left behind in excess. So it is really important to be able to identify the limiting reactant in a stoichiometric problem because the whole point of stoichiometry is to predict how much product is going to form. And that is known as the theoretical yield. Theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product that could be formed in a reaction. The maximum amount of product that can be formed and it is based on the limiting reactant. So the limiting reactant will tell us the maximum amount of product that can be formed. And this is theoretical. This is not in a lab. This is only based on stoichiometry. This would be the maximum amount of product that would be formed in a perfect 
scenario where nothing is escaped into the environment, your reactants 100% completely used up and turns completely 100% into product. So this is theoretical, the maximum amount of product that could be formed based on the limiting reactant. So now the question is, how do we identify the limiting reactant? How do I know which of my reactants is going to be limiting? The easiest way to identify the limiting reactant is to look at both of our reactants and determine which reactant produces the smallest amount amount of product. Which reactant produces the smallest amount of product? An amount can be in moles or grams. I typically use moles because it's one less step in your stoichiometry. Let's try an example together. Let's say that we have ammonia and copper oxide in H3 plus CuO, and that yields nitrogen gas, copper, and water. So the first thing that we need to do is write the balanced equation. And that would be true for any stoichiometric problem. So on the left-hand side, I only have one nitrogen. On the right-hand side, I have two. So I'm going to start by putting a coefficient of two here. And of course, that also changes the number of hydrogens that I have. Two times three is six, which means I need six on the right-hand side. So I'm going to put a three here. This three also changes the number of oxygens that I have. Now I have three oxygens on the right-hand side, so I need to come and put a coefficient of three on the left-hand side, which of course affects my copper as well. So the last thing I'm going to put is a coefficient of three in front of my copper. So everything looks balanced. The next thing that we need to decide is what is our limiting reactant? And we can decide that by figuring out which reactant produces the least amount of product. Because our limiting reactant limits the extent of the reaction. It limits how much product will be made because it runs out during the reaction and the other reactant is left in excess. So let's write out our question. If we have 18.1 grams of NH3 and 90.4 grams of CuO, how much nitrogen will be produced? This is a great example of a stoichiometric problem. We're given the amount of reactant that we're starting with and we're told to predict how much product will be made. And remember, this is the theoretical yield that we're predicting, the maximum amount of product that could be made, and it's based off of the limiting reactant. So let's get started. We are going to try and see which reactant produces the least amount of product. So I'm just gonna start with NH3 because it's the first listed reactant. So I have 18.1 grams of NH3. Remember the first step is always converting into moles. So one mole goes on top because I want the unit of grams to cancel. And looking on the periodic table, I can see that nitrogen weighs 14.01 grams. Hydrogen weighs about one gram. So add that all together and I get 17 grams of NH3. And I want to know how much nitrogen will be produced by this amount of NH3. So that means I need to go back up to my equation and look at my coefficients to decide which mole ratio I need to use. I have a coefficient of one in front of my nitrogen and a coefficient of two in front of my ammonia. So I'm gonna put one mole 
of N2 on top and two moles of NH3 on the bottom because I want my moles of NH3 to cancel out, grams of NH3 to cancel out so that I'm left with moles of N2. And then we can put this in our calculator, 18.1 divided by 17.01 divided by 2, which gives us 0 0.532 moles of N2. And we're going to do the same exact thing for copper oxide. So I have 90.4 grams of CuO. The first step is to always convert into moles. So one mole on top. Copper has a mass of about 63.55. Oxygen has a mass of 16, which gives us a mass of about 79.55 grams. And I want to know how much nitrogen is produced, so I need to go back and look at my ratios. Nitrogen has, again, a coefficient of 1. Copper oxide has a coefficient of 3. So I put 1 mole of N2 on the top and 3 moles of CuO on the bottom. So I have 90.4 divided by 79.55 divided by 3, which is 0 0.380 moles of N2. So now I need to decide which of these is my limiting reactant. The limiting reactant will produce the least amount of product. It's the reactant that controls the amount of product that's made because we run out of that reactant. So let's take a look. Ammonia produces 0.532 moles of N2. Copper oxide produces 0.38 moles of N2. So that means that in this reaction, the maximum amount of product that can be made is 0.38 moles of N2 because after that point, we would run out of copper oxide. NH3 can make up to 0.532 moles of N2, but the problem is that we would run out of copper oxide before we got to that point. So that's why copper oxide is the limiting reactant. It produces the least amount of product. So copper oxide is limiting, is the limiting reactant. NH3 is in excess we'd be left with NH3 at the end of this reaction. All of our copper oxide is used up and it produces 0.38 moles of N2. And let's see how many grams of nitrogen would be produced. 380 moles of N2 just by using my molar ratio. So one mole of N2 is equal to 28. 0.02 grams. I just added two nitrogens together and that equals 10.6 grams of N2. And again, this is my theoretical yield. This is the maximum amount of product that could be made based off of my limiting reactant. So the theoretical yield of nitrogen is 10.6 grams. And I found that by first writing out and balancing my equation, and then by figuring out which reactant produces the least amount of product. And that is our limiting reactant. The limiting reactant will produce the least amount of product. And then all I have to do is take that smaller amount of product and turn it into grams to find my theoretical yield of nitrogen. I hope this video helped you understand what a limiting reactant is. If you're still struggling, check out some other videos on my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by.